Hey guys, how's it going? Just me, Nesto2 here, with another review for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at McFarlane Toys Spawn the Dark Ages The Blackheart. This is technically Series 14 in the Spawn universe of toys. But uh, for the Dark Ages, I think this might be Series 1. I'm not sure because it doesn't say anything. Could have been the first one. I'm not exactly sure. If you know, then let me know. As you can see, he's have the uh, DC direct uh, stand on it because the box is slightly dented down there so I can't stand it up on its own. Let's get a close look at the package. It looks pretty cool in there. It's got a bunch of stuff in there. A bunch of accessories. So we got over here, spawn. Dark Ages appear. You know what? It says ages 5 and older. You tell me a five-year-old's gonna have this figure? Dang, that's kind of weird. It's a little demonic for a five-year-old. Yeah, down here it says figure has 19 pivot points. Right here we got we've got ultra action figures. Let me make fun of toys down here, and his name right here. Spawn the Black Heart. It's pretty cool. So here we got 14. Series 14. On the back, we get a bunch of other stuff, other figures. Then we got Spawn himself, the black heart. And the rest of the figures in the wave are right there. We got, I had not pronounced the first one. It's uh, the Eve Crow Mainser. I'm not sure. Well, the next one is uh, Mandarin Spawn. After that, we've got the Viper King. And Tormentor and Ignitus and Tuscan Tuscadon, yeah. So that's the other figures in the wave. We also have other waves right here. We've got the Yellow Submarine, we've got the Fun and Toys Movie Main X Series 2. Over here, we've got Techno Spawn, which I'm not into at all. Ozzy Osbourne with a bunch of accessories and a nice stand. And right here we got an actual read up of the black cart right here. So if you want, I'll read it for you since it's so such a short read up. All right, it says a heart molded and stoked from the fires of hell. Donovan Brood was banished from the kingdom's elite court of knights for his murderous and ruthless ways of enforcing the king's orders. In exile, he put together his own elite force of killers and thieves known as the plague. During a major battle with the king's knights, Brood was killed. In his first term in hell, he was given the power of a hell spawn and returned to the plain of earth. There he conquered the very kingdom he was banished from and inflicted his own hell on earth for those that rebuffed him. Rebuffed? What the heck? I've never even heard of that. You rebuffed me! You're gonna pay. It's pretty weird, but basically, this figure is evil. He is a bad guy. So yeah, it looks like he's got all, all of his accessories in this picture. So we'll try to match that. Alright, let's take a closer look here at the black heart. And here he is out of the package waiting to be reviewed. And he has several accessories, so I'm going to take a look at those first. Comes with this axe. This huge axe. It's pretty awesome. Sculpted really nice. It's got all this detail on it. Make it look like it's not just, you know, one little piece of plastic. So we've got the blade right here. comes out this way, the spike. Also another one right there. That's awesome. It's got all this paint detail, like the shading. Like, you see all the black in there? It's cool. It's got a sharp tip. It's nice. I like it. It's got, and it has not just one color, you know. It's got black. It's got silver. It's got some more shading. And right here. More like a rusty gold almost. Not quite sure. He also comes with this axe. Another axe. This one looks more traditional. And it's got all kinds of blood paint on it. Look at that. It's got a bunch of blood splatter. It looks like it's not been... Uh, it doesn't look like it's just like straight up killed somebody. It looks like somebody got killed in front of it. Because there's no like real blood stains. It's just a bunch of blood splatter. It's weird. But it still looks good. So this paint detail, all the sculpting on it. It's cool. It's 
Got the tip in the bottom. You know what? I don't get what this is though. This right here. I don't get it. I don't think it has anything to do with his hands, but whatever. It's really good. You know what I don't like about these uh, weapons though? Is they feel kind of fragile, you know? Like, I thought they were going to be rubbery or, uh, I don't know, just not like this. Like, you feel them? You hear that? They're made of the, the exact same material as the whole weapon here. And, uh, I don't know. It just feels like it's going to break when I put it into his hands. I think rubbery accessories would have helped from breaking. But that's just me. It also comes with more stuff. It comes with this cloth thingy. <laughs> So, uh, what I suspect, because not even the picture in the read-up has it, of, uh, where it goes, so, it goes on him like, like a, like a poncho or something. So, we'll get into that later. It also comes with this, and this is cool. This is his cape. It's awesome. It looks, it looks more like, um, like this is the traditional part of the Hellspawns, where they have a red cape. This looks like, kind of like shoulder armor. And then it goes all the way back here to like this spine right here. It's crazy. Look at that. All those little details. It's insane. I like it. And it's all one piece. It's somewhat rubbery. But like what's really interesting, well, other than the fact that it's got paint shading. That's cool. But it's got these little metal chains. It's cool. These are actual metal. Right there and over here. It's awesome. Thank you, McFarlane. Thank you. It also comes with this. And I don't actually know what it is. Made of the same material as the weapons. It's not rubbery. It looks cool. It's supposed to be, I guess, like a scorpion tail. Scorpion stinger. At least it's, you know, detailed really well. Look at that. It's cool. And where it, go where it goes is right here. Right here. Into the cape. It goes in easily, actually. There we go. Done. So, yeah. One thing I forgot to mention that comes with this figure is uh, this flyer right here, which they used to do back in the day, where all it is is, uh, you know, like a poster of other figures that have come out. You see down there, we got Michael Myers. You got all kinds of stuff. It's pretty cool. It's appreciated. But on the back is where it actually counts. So you got some more stuff right there. Danger Girl. But where it counts is back here. Because look, it's got instructions for all the figures in this wave. So that's really nice. So if you don't know what you're doing, let's look at this paper. And it'll tell you. See right here? Right here it tells you what to do with them. The accessories on the figure I have right now. With Blackheart. Got the axe. Got the cape, the stinger. It's cool. But there's still nothing, no indication on the, the cloth. But I'll show you where it goes. So let's finally take a look at the figure now. And this figure looks awesome. Look at him. He's very medieval style like, you know. It's cool. Look at this. This is insane. We don't get action figures like this anymore. Look at so much detail, it's got so much paint detail. Sculpting and paint is top notch. I will say though, the plastic made for this figure is somewhat cheaper. Cheap, like, yeah, I don't know. Can't describe it, it just feels and looks uh, like it's like it's not the best, you know, like, like it's not as strong as NECA plastic. But you know, it was back then, so what do you expect? Anyways, other than the weird plastic old school style the sculpting is top notch however I feel like his torso is uh, kind of outdated when it comes to the detailing I don't know it just looks looks almost kiddish the way it looks his chest and his abs but what but what makes it uh, not as noticeable is the fact that it's got all this other detail on it like right here for his armor and then all the paint detail with the shading too that's what makes it not as noticeable but yeah, he's got the traditional spawn colors right here, red and white. But instead of just straight up black, he's got the actual armor. It's cool. And this is actual metal right here too, the chains. It's awesome. He's got the skull right there. It's cool. Look at his arms. Arms right here. He's got like 
some more armor on top of it with the spikes the straps and he's got some gauntlets on with the gloves and he's got some spikes on it he's got, he's got a big old spike right here the blade the other side's got a different kind of armor on it a different gauntlet with more blades on it it's insane he's got more gloves and his, his other two arms are awesome as well look at they're not the exact arms you'd expect you know just give them the same arms no you got different sculpting for the armor and for the gauntlets and for the blade it's crazy and it has different hands for each his hands open like gripping almost but not quite this one is gripping for accessories and this side same thing has a hole for accessories and the other arm yet again a different sculpt got different straps on it as well and a different blade it's awesome his hand is open as well they're all different it's awesome like I really appreciate all this detail they gave us look how he looks with his arms out it's insane he's got all kinds of crazy armor on his thighs I like it I like it a lot look at all this stuff it's insane I think the only thing nice detail is his butt <laughs> and the boots are very unique look at this I feel like his boots are like something out of like Kevin Sorbo Hercules <laughs> he's got some knee pads on as well with one skull on this side it's insane I really like it it's cool articulation wise all you can do is have the swivel on his head so you can turn left and right very hindered though from the way it's sculpted like you look at his mask his entire mask isn't just the the generic you know tights like Al Simmons this one is actual armor you can see him he has a traditional spawn face it's cool really like it it's like Braveheart status <laughs> so yeah you can swivel left and right can't really go far because of the armor down here you cannot go up and down slightly but not much shoulders on a ball hinge well a ball joint yeah because it's not pin and socket you can go all the way up and then hindered due to that arm and all the way down hindered by that arm as well and side to side but not in a specific way it's a ball joint you see that it's like old school ninja turtles and swivel at this elbow which does help swivel at this wrist so that's good and behind him same thing ball joint at the shoulder and swivel at the, swivel at the elbow swivel at the wrist and on the other side same thing ball joint swivel and swivel here but on this side this one's slightly different ball joint at the shoulder and no swivel at the elbow but he has a hinge see that it's cool I like how they added that in out of nowhere but it makes no sense how they did that but it's better than nothing so yeah no wrist wrist no waist there we go no waist will due to the fact that the way it's sculpted and the chains they probably just thought eh, it doesn't need it and that's fine it does have thigh cuts right here, V cut swivel, you can go this far up, that's pretty far, this far up, backwards as well. No thigh cut, it does have a single jointed knee, that's good, that's cool. And he does have an ankle joint right there, can't really go up too far but he can go back, it's awesome. Same thing the other side. So he's got loads of articulation for a McFarlane figure. And I appreciate that. Thank you, McFarlane. Thank you. And as for some of his accessories, here is the cloth. And I'll put it on him like this. There's no indication of where it goes. This is no picture. There's no instructions on it. So I'm just going to put it on him like this. <laughs> and he's got a cape. <coughs> but <coughs> so I, I think this is actually correct because you can see where the arms go right here. Or the elbows. That's the second arms trying to go through. There's a cut on each side right here. Looks good, looks all ripped and everything. So I'm assuming that's how it goes. And then you put the other cape on it, this one. You just slip it right on. Yep, there we go. And he's wearing it. It's cool. And for his weapons, the axe does fit in this hand. But it's a little too big for this hand. Like, see that's kind of loose. So it doesn't hold, he holds it, but it doesn't hold it tight. And the 
the back hands don't hold anything because they're opened so uh, one thing to mention also the cape it kind of moves do you see the articulation you see that not by a lot and you can always adjust it but just something to mention this side's open as well but this one this one's gripped for accessories as well but you see that see how small that is like what the heck I can't even put anything in there I've tried and I've tried the only way to do it is maybe if I use some hot water or a blood dryer and heat up this hand and then open his hand up and then put it in and then let it close that's the only way you can do it because it's not going to fit because uh, this hand the thumb and the fingers are not connected so that'll work but I'm not going to do it right now this side was meant for this axe because it does fit this one's not going to fit over here if it does fit, sorry about that if it does fit, you got to do the same thing, he don't heat up his hand this hand however um, the fingers are connected to the thumb so it's always going to be a pain in the butt you just got to keep going through until it actually goes through because I can't open the hand so yeah, so it's in there now and it stays yeah, it's tight enough, yeah so he can hold it, so that's good Damn, look how big this thing is. So for a size comparison, we'll bring in other figures to compare him. Here is also from McFarlane, Raven Spawn. And here he is next to Blackheart. Looks good. It's a good size. These are nowhere near in the same series, but yet they're the same size, so that's good. And here is also from McFarlane, Spawn from the 10th anniversary. If I can get him to... St oh, that was easy. Usually he doesn't want to stand. But yeah, there he is next to Black Card. He's way taller. But that's fine with me. It's not too big of a deal. And here he is from Mattel. DC Universe Classics. Green Arrow. Here he is next to Black Card. It's a good size as well. Nice. And here he is from Toy Biz. Urban Legends. Marvel Legends. Daredevil. Yeah, there we go. Black Card, same size as... DC Universe figures, but a little bit taller than Marvel figures. It's not bad, I like it. So, my final thoughts on this figure. He's awesome. Spawn the Black Heart. It's pretty damn epic. And what I meant uh, about we don't get action figures like this anymore is, uh, you know, McFarlane doesn't make Spawn figures anymore. All he does is Halo, 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 sports figures, but he has been making The Walking Dead figures, so that's pretty good. But I don't pick them up, mostly because of their size. They're too small. I'm not a 5 inch or under collector. I'm in the 6 inch scale. And this figure's awesome. He's got tons of articulation, tons of detail, tons of paint. It's awesome. Like, we don't get figures like this anymore. Like, not from Hasbro, not from, like, anything. <coughs> I think the only ones that would come close to it would be uh, NECA and maybe DC Collectibles. Maybe. Marvel Select, which is Diamond Select, they do some pretty good things too. But what I mean is like, you know, like this figure is pretty damn articulated and detailed up the ass. Like I don't see Marvel Select doing as much articulation as much as we need. This one has it, like he has everything you're gonna need. I mean, yeah, you could use hinges like this elbow does, but that's not a big deal. Because what does it matter if his arm's straight or bent like this already? All you need to do is make sure it's over here or over there. So that works. He's, he's, he'll be hindered due to so much detail on him already anyways. So it's fine. I like him. If I were to rate him, I were to rate him and maybe... A 7.5. That's almost an, an 8. And the reason why he doesn't get an 8 is because I don't know that much about Blackheart here. If I knew more about him, maybe he'd go higher. But he's really cool, nonetheless. Nonetheless, as a figure in general, he's awesome. So yeah. That was my review on Spawn the Blackheart from McFarland Toys. Almost vintage, by the way. This figure is over 10 years old. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed my review and uh, still got more from this wave to review. Alright guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.